So uh, we are still in chapter 4 where we have uh, gone through the introduction to the LPC1768 microcontroller, the memory map I.O. And uh, we have been introduced to ARM Embed, which is the API which will help uh, us as a programmer uh, to program the microcontroller uh, more easily because uh, uh, we can skip the hard part of uh, setting the uh, peripheral in the code. Yeah? For example, when we want to access the GPIO, we have learned that we need to access the control register of the GPIO in order to uh, write or read to the uh, GPIO or to the pin of the microcontroller. But by using embed, we can use the uh, built-in uh, library in order to initialize our microcontroller uh, to tell the microcontroller uh, uh, whether which is input, which is output, and what kind of input uh, is that. Uh, for example, in uh, analog input or analog output, analog uh, digital input or digital out output. So we also have learned uh, this uh, digital input and digital output by using embed and also in uh, uh, by uh, accessing the control register of the digital input and output. So today we will uh, continue to the analog input and output and uh, we will try to look at the pulse width modulation and uh, the other uh, programming techniques. So this yeah, is what we have gone through. So this is the embed microcontroller we, where uh, we have the LPC1768 here, the microprocessor core, and uh, we have the USB connection or USB port to connect to the computer for programming. And we have the uh, physical pin yeah and we have uh, this is the uh, the functional functionality of the pin uh, the pin function where when we look at this the blue color means that this pin can be configured as uh, digital in IO uh, digital input and output right and also at the same time this pin this pin for example this one two three four five six can be configured to be an analog input also. And another one is this one analog out, which is P18, can be configured as the analog output. Uh, means that if we have digital value in our uh, microprocessor, we can convert that to analog voltage through this pin. And we have another functionality as well, where here is the communication yeah, we use this uh, pin, for example, this is a serial peripheral interface. We will learn in, uh, in the next chapter, chapter 4. Yeah, and this is the uh, serial, another serial uh, communication uh, prot uh, peripheral. This one is also, this is the at, uh, Ethernet. This one is USB, this one is uh, CN communication also. Uh, this one is the PWN, the one that we will learn today, PWN, and also the analog in and analog out. So uh, this is what the API is, which is the uh, medium uh, between the hardware and uh, the user software, which is our code. So uh, this is the uh, software also yeah, where it will do the all the necessary setting uh, to access the hardware, the microcontroller here. All right. So what we do is to use uh, what is offered 
by the API. For example, the digital in, digital out uh, function where we can uh, set the uh, digital pin to be an output. For example, in this example, we set the pin that connected to LED1, the name is LED1, this is fixed yeah, in uh, the embed board, or any other pin here, for example, P5, if we write P5 here, P5 means that uh, my LED is connected to the P5, and we can use straight away P5 here when we do this, so uh, actually, this the API will access the hardware and the uh, control register in our microcontroller to set this P5 to be an output pin so that we can use straight away here. All right, when we assign one to my LED here, means that we send one to P5, uh, pin P5, and this is the wait function or a delay function. With 0.2 means that we uh, have a delay of 0.2 second and this is the API also function with yeah we can use straight away so when we have this uh, we can see that we don't need to to write the delay function right this is uh, uh, a little bit different from uh, what uh, when we uh, code uh, without using the API for example uh, when we have the code in uh, kill without using the API uh, this is the code where here we need to access the control register in order to set the uh, GPIO or set the, the pin to be an input and uh, here is how we turn on and turn off the LED or access the pin where we need to access the the name and eh, the, 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 uh, the register that that is uh, associated with the with the in, uh, output pin and also the delay function here we need to create our own uh, delay function here to count a number uh, such that we can we can call this function delay function here and we get the delay and this delay is uh, uh, we cannot sure that uh, how long the delay is eh? so we need to test our program for example if we have this number so how long is the delay but if we use the embed API This one is uh, designed such that this is uh, give it, it it give it us uh, a precise delay. Yeah? For example, if we write 0 0.2 here, it will give it give us exactly 0 0.2 second delay uh, without uh, writing any any delay function. So that is mean by uh, API, and we will use this API. Uh, for the rest of our course to speed up the uh, programming uh, process yeah so last week also we have learned the uh, bus in and bus out where we can group uh, many IO pin together right digital IO pin so this is uh, another example of using bus in and bus out right we also have looked at this example already so you can refer back to the previous uh, lecture. The video is up, was uploaded uh, on the YouTube already. And today we will uh, look at the analog to digital conversion. Right. So uh, as we know that our microcontroller, our microprocessor is a digital uh, electronic device. So it can only uh, process or manip manipulate uh, digital data 
right? So we, 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 we have learned before that the data in the microprocessor is uh, a digital data, right? So, but uh, most of the time, the data outside of the microcontroller or microprocessor is in analog form. For example, uh, a voltage, right? And uh, when we read, we want to read the input from the outside, or for example, from the sensor. So this, the, the, uh, the data that the sensor uh, sends is uh, normally uh, an analog value. Analog voltage, yeah, or uh, analog uh, quantity, right? So that analog uh, quantity will be translated or converted to analog uh, voltage by the sensor. For example, the temperature, right? So the temperature is is a uh, is a uh, an analog uh, quantity, right? Since uh, Temperature 20 degree Celsius, 21 degree Celsius is uh, an analog uh, quantity. So we will use the sensor, the temperature sensor, to convert that analog uh, quantity, the temperature, into the analog voltage. Or, or we also have uh, some of the uh, digital sensor, but in this case, uh, we will use the analog sensor. For example, the LM35 uh, is the uh, analog sensor, analog temperature sensor that will convert the temperature into the analog voltage. So the when the sensor is connected to the microcontroller. And our microcontroller is a digital device, so we need to convert that analog voltage into a digital value. So we need what we call the analog to digital converter, or in short, is the ADC. So in modern microcontroller, the ADC is built in inside the microcontroller. So if you have you want to buy the microcontroller and you want to read the uh, analog data or you want to use the analog uh, sensor so make sure that your microcontroller has the ADC built in or if you uh, buy a microcontroller without the ADC built in so you need the external ADC in order to convert the analog uh, voltage to the uh, digital value before you can uh, use it. So in our case, the LPC uh, one seven six eight microcontroller has uh, an ADC built in. So our task is to use that ADC to convert the analog voltage into the digital value. So in the microprocessor processor or microcontroller we will have the analog value or analog voltage here and we have the microcontroller here this is the outside the external this is the internal so normally the analog, uh, uh, the microcontroller can have many ADC input. For example, in our case, when we look back to the microcontroller here, so this, for example, we have six, one, two, three, four, five, six analog input to the microprocessor, to the microcontroller. And uh, Actually, inside the microcontroller, we have only one ADC, yeah. Because if you want have you want to have six ADC, so that will be uh, very costly. You need to 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 have a bigger microcontroller. The circuit is must be bigger. 
all right because you need to have six adc but in uh in practice uh, most of the microcontroller today has only one adc built in and uh, use the multiplexer to select one analog input at a time for example in this case right this is the adc inside the microcontroller and this is the uh, input the analog input and connected to the pin and we have the multiplexer here so at one time this multiplexer will select which one uh, to enter the adc here right so we use uh, this is the analog multiplexer all right so we have learned the digital multiplexer already in digital design so the concept is the same but this one is for analog uh, multiplexer where the function is the same where it is uh, used to select uh, only one input to the output here at a time right so of course if you want to have many adc here the performance is better because you can read and convert all the analog input here simultaneously but if you have one adc here means that although you have up to six or up to how many analog input uh, as you want but at one time only one input can be or can enter the microcontroller and read by the adc and process right so we don't have uh, the uh, features uh, to to read uh, all of this analog input at the same time or simultaneously because we only have one adc right so uh, the drawback is that the uh, if we have many analog input the uh, uh, time for converting the analog input for every or for each uh, sensor is longer as compared to uh, if we have more ADC or we can do uh, simultaneously but remember that our microcontroller is fast and it can uh, read this input very fast send to this ADC and change the to the second read convert and save the result right so the microcontroller can do this uh, very fast we even cannot realize that uh, uh, the microcontroller do the switching here right read one at a time all right so what the microcontroller do when uh, uh, read the analog input and process the value so we need to look at the process here. So in the microcontroller, we have, this is, uh, for example, this is our microcontroller. And we will have the ADC. And for example, this is the input pin that connect to the analog analog input here. So we want to convert this analog input to be a digital value so this adc has the internal register actually so it has the internal register and can be many
So the first one, the very important one is the control register that is used to do the or to initialize the ADC to turn on, for example, turn the ADC on. And to select the channel because here we have many uh, input, but only one input can enter the ADC at a time. So we can use the control register in order to select which one to go to into the ADC. And all right, one is maybe to turn on, to turn on the ADC. Second is and the function of the control register. The second function is to select the channel. Number three is to set the conversion time or frequency. or what we call the sampling frequency, we will see later. So the conversion time is the uh, time for the ADC need to uh, convert from analog to digital. For, so for example, this is the analog value. So the ADC will need some time. All right. 1 microsecond, 2 microsecond, 10 microsecond in order to get or to convert this to a digital value. So that is called the conversion time. And also other necessary uh, setting, for example, the interrupt. Yeah. And so on. And uh, another register that is important also, which is the, the register to store the result of the conversion. So the analog input here is converted, uh, is converted to digital value by the ADC and the result of the conversion is stored here. So this is for result before we can read by the by the microprocessor in order to process so this result or this the register control register the result and any other register is mapped yeah also map to the memory just like what we learned in uh, gpio so if we look back to this Just like this, yeah. This is GPIO mapped to the address in the memory. So same as the ADC. Look at the memory map here. The ADC is uh, here from address four zero zero three four zero 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 to the address before this. So all of these addresses. Uh, are mapped to the ADC, right? Which means this, this one. So we will not going into detail in this case because we will use the embed uh, API. Means that no need to access this control in the code uh, where we will only use the embed API, the function that is uh, available for uh, that can be straight away used in our code. So in uh, embed, what we will do is instead of accessing directly to the microprocessor or microcontroller register, so we will use the 
analog in function instead. So for example, if we want to read the analog value, so we can use analog in and connect it to what pin here. And we can read that analog value already from this variable. We can see later on, but before that, let's look, go back to this and look at the theory behind the ADC first. So that is the idea of the ADC. And uh, now we want to understand how the ADC work. So first thing is that let's look at the very simple ADC. where it used to convert the analog voltage into the digital value here. All right. So normally the ADC, the voltage value here is proportional to the to the uh, digital output here. So let's for example, uh, this ADC has uh, what we call the ref reference voltage of five volt. So reference voltage means that the maximum voltage of this ADC zero volt is the minimum and five volt is the maximum, and this is called the uh, reference voltage so meaning that if we have we zero volt this will be converted to zero in digital and if we have five volt this will be converted to the maximum value of that uh, digital value so for example in our case our ADC, the size is 8 bit, mean that, means that the result, the register that holds the result here is 8 bit. So, the digital representation of 0 volt is zero 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 eight bit and the maximum value will be one 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 and this one is one 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 and in uh, decimal is actually two five five and of course this one is zero And in, the, in, the, in between, there are many others. 0 to 255 means that 256 a combination. So we can represent up to 256 digital value. The number between 0 to 5. This means... 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is what is the analog value that is converted to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 and the next one is until we have the maximum 1 right so in this case we can just uh, determine this by having uh, this uh, 1 over the maximum value is 255 multiplied by the 
reference value or maximum value 5 so this is equal to uh, so we can use uh, the calculator one over two five five multiply by five so we have this value so it's about 0 0.02 wood so this is about 0 0.02 wood meaning that this should be 0 0.02 wood and this should be 0 0.04 wood we represent or when we convert it to this value 0 0.05 wood will be converted to 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 1 uh, not 5 sorry 6 All right so this is called the resol uh, resolution of the of the ADC or we call it resolution per bit right means that one bit the value is 0 0.02 to wood so until you have five wood you have this okay so if we have uh, 8 bit ADC and we have is 5 wood meaning that 0 wood will be converted to this in digital 0 0.02 wood will be converted to this 0 0.014 wood is this and so on the question is what if the analog value is 0 0.01 so in this case we don't have any digital representation so remember when we use digital not all uh, value can be represented it depends on the size of the of our ADC okay and digital uh, is a discrete uh, quantity right remember so not all the value can be represented we will see later uh, what happened if we have we have this okay so this is the uh, equation to get the digital value if we have the analog value so this is uh, the digital output of the ADC and this is uh, the analog input and this is V reference and the 2 power of n n is the size of your ADC right for example if 8 bit is 8 So uh, back to our our case. So the uh, equation is v in or v analog is equal no sorry digital value the output is equal to v in v ref multiply by two power of n where n is the size of your ADC and I, the, uh, the 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 full equation should be two power of n minus one, yeah. But because the uh, this one is very small, so we can just ignore. So it is actually approximately uh, two power of n, right? To so to simplify, we just ignore uh, minus one in this case. So for example, in our case, we want to know if our V in is one word, what happened? So in this case, 
should be 1 over v ref is 5 multiplied by 2 power of 8 which is 256 and we have what is the value so again we need our calculator One over five multiply by two five six, which is uh, two power of eight. So it should be fifty one. So point two is ignored now. Yeah? So fifty one. So in digital value is five one is this. So this is the digital value. So it should be. 110011 11, 0, 0, 11. 11, 0, 0, 11. and this is 8 bit so we have this right and this is another example so if our ADC is 8 bit and reference voltage is 3.3 .3, so in our case our uh, LPC 1768 the reference voltage is not 5 volt but 3.3 volt so the digital value of the analog input of uh, 2 volt should be this value so we can uh, verify this by using the calculator here uh, we have 2 volt the input Divide by the reference, which is 3.3. We have this. So we multiply by because we still use 8 bit size. So 256. So we have this 155. So uh, in uh, digital is 1001. So we have this value. But if our ADC is 10 bit, so the output will be this yeah so if you 2 power of 10 is now uh, 1024 so if you multiply by 1024 so you will have this and this is uh, 10 bit right so that is the uh, how the uh, digital value is uh, determined for the ADC and uh, let's look at this relation between the analog input and the digital output so if we draw the relation in graph like this and let's say uh, our ADC is very small which is 3 bit only 3 bit ADC so the minimum value will be 0 0 0 and the maximum value will be 1 1 1 and this is in the, between 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 is the maximum and let's say for example make this uh, sim simpler by uh, having a uh, vr equal to 7 volt all right so means that this is 1 volt 2 3 4 5 6 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so this is 7 volt maximum okay so 1 volt will be represented by 0 0 1 2 volt is 0 1 0 3 is this and so on so this is back to this problem again where what if we have the value in between for example in this case is 0 0.01 or 0 0.03 so in this example what if we have the value the analog value in between for example 0 0.5 here 0 0.6, 0 0.7 or any value in between the answer is we don't have any digital representation we will lose that value right so the ADC will give you the the nearest value for example if you have 0 0.1 you will have 0 if you have 0 0.9 you will have 0, 0, 001 that we call the quantization error yeah 
quantization error. Right. Means that we not get exactly the the value. Right. We get the approximate value of the the output. That is the limitation. So this implies that if you have a big big uh, ADC, for example, ten bit, twenty bit, so you will minimize the the quantization error, right? Because for example, in our case here, when we want to represent the value zero point zero one word, we don't have any digital value to represent that because the uh, our ADC resolution is 0 0.02 wood means that the step uh, for for analog value is from 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04 and so on so we don't have 0 0.02 but if we have a bigger ADC for example if we have 10 bit ADC so now the step is smaller so uh, the resolution is now will be or the step size it will be 1 over 1023 multiplied by uh, 5 which is approximately yeah using the calculator we have 0 0.005 0 0.05 means that if we have 0 volt the digital output is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 10 bit and the next value for digital 1 is 0 0.05 not 0 0.05 right 0 0.05 0 0.05 so this should be 0 0.05 would and the next one is 0 0.10, 0 0.010 is this. Is 1, 1 and so on. So now we have the digital representation of 0 0.01 volt. If we use 10 bit ADC. So the conclusion is, if you have a bigger ADC, you will have a better uh, conversion, all right, where you can represent more analog value. So uh, this we call quantization error, where the part uh, the analog value that we cannot represent in digital value is called quantization error and uh, another one is we call the greatest quantization error this uh, parameter is very important to uh, determine whether our ADC is good or not right so the greatest quantization error is the step size divided by 2 so for example this one the greatest in, uh, quantization error is uh, the step size is 1 word divided by 2 is 0 0.5 so this one is 0 0.5 word right so in this example this one the greatest quantization error uh, Right, this is one half of the step width eh, or step size. Greatest quantization error, or in short, we call GQE in this case. Let's call GQE greatest quantization error. In this case, is 0 0.01 wood. Yeah, step size is 0 0.02 uh, divided by 2. We have 0.01. In this case, greatest quantization error will be 0.005 divided by 2. We have 0.0025. So, uh, the smaller the quantization error, the better the, the ADC. 
And of course, if you have a big uh, ADC, yeah, a bigger ADC, the time for conversion, yeah, the conversion time is normally longer as compared to the smaller ADC. So because, for example, if you have this, yeah, the number that will be represented is very small. So normally this ADC will uh, convert the analog value to digital value very fast as compared to the bigger because you have many number to deal with, right? So this is another example. If you have 8-bit ADC and the uh, reference is 3.3 volt, so the greatest quantization error in this case is 3.3 over 256. Uh, uh, this is step size, 12.89. Uh, so uh, we have 6.45 millivolt in this case. But if you have 12-bit ADC, and uh, of course our microcontroller, the LPC1768. One seven six eight has a built-in ADC, which is twelve bit, which is quite big, right? So uh, means that the step size will be zero point eight millivolt, and of course the quantization error, the worst case or greatest quantization error is zero point four millivolt, which is quite good. So uh, for many application, an eight bit ADC. 12 or 12 ADC uh, is sufficient uh, for many applications. But for very uh, uh, very big data, for example, the audio or video, so you might need to have a bigger uh, ADC, for example, 16-bit or 24-bit ADC. Uh, now look at the conversion time and this is related to the sampling uh, frequency. So what is uh, sampling frequency? Sampling frequency means that the time that you sample your data, the analog data, or you read the analog data and convert to the digital. So for this example, this is the analog voltage. So this is the time where you read the analog and convert to digital or we call it sample. So we sample at zero here and here, 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 here. So many sample per, per analog cycle. Right. So this is at one analog cycle, right? So this analog, one analog cycle, we take many sample so that we preserve the, the original data. So if we look at this, this is analog voltage and you take the sample right so when you remove that so you can see that the data here still represent the, the, the original data. Although we have lost some point, for example, here we don't have any analog representation, uh, digital representation. Here also we don't have. But if you look at the, the shape of the data, it is resemble the original original data right and uh, 
the frequency of sampling here right is called the sampling frequency okay so sampling frequency is very important because it will uh, define whether the data is valid or not so let's say for example if our sampling frequency is high like this this is quite high as compared to the to the data the frequency of the analog signal here so of course the sampling frequency is higher yeah because this one this one is the period of the analog value and this one is the period of the this uh, the uh, sampling all right so this is much higher and of course if we have high sampling frequency so we have a good uh, digital data that resemble the original data but when we uh, reduce the sampling frequency so for example in this case we reduce the sampling frequency such that something like this means that t is uh, this is t sampling ts this is t analog become bigger so we can see that this is still resemble the original data and the shape is still there we have this like this like this all right so it's still okay but if we increase further the sampling frequency uh, sorry reduce further the sampling frequency means that we increase the this cycle so in this case like this so the now we can see that the information is beginning to to loss right the information begins to to loss and if we increase more so for example the sampling frequency is something like this right so we can we can see that now the data is is lost the original data become something something like this so this is called uh aliasing all right so for example this is another example when we the the sample uh, sampling frequency is too low all right as compared to the original data so we can see that the original data is lost completely all right so we call it aliasing has occurred all right so in order to uh, to be safe we need to follow what is called the nyquist sampling uh, criterion all right where is it it state that the sampling frequency must be two times at least uh, at least two times the signal frequency or the data frequency must be two times for example in audio system uh, we can see that the audio uh, frequency is approximately 20 kilohertz and the sampling frequency of the cd quality is must be at least 44.1 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz at least right such that the 
the uh, the original data can be uh, preserved right so in practice so please make sure that if you have the data the analog data that you want to read you know, using ADC make sure that you sample and the sample frequency sampling frequency must be at least double of this signal frequency right to uh, avoid what is called the aliasing where we lost completely the information Okay, that is the, uh, the, the, the theory that uh, we need to know in order to, to use the ADC in our uh, microcontroller application. So now we will look at the uh, embed microcontroller here, how to read the analog input and uh, process. Of course, we need to write the code to process the analog value. And maybe we want to uh, send the uh, result to the to the outside to the output, right? So for example, we read the analog value from the sensor, and we want to display that value uh, on the LCD, so we can output to any of the pin here that is connected to the LCD. So in uh, embed we can use the analog in to read the analog input to a uh, variable right so now let's look at this example where we have this sensor and this is a very simple sensor uh, it is a temperature sensor the lm35 right so this sensor is sensitive to the temperature where it is uh, proportional to the output yeah, the, temp, uh, the the output voltage we out here is proportional to the to the temperature to the environment temperature so it will sense the temperature and give the analog output at vo here and this vo is uh, linearly proportional to the temperature that it sends and uh, the relation is this the output is 10 millivolt per uh, degree celsius means that every degree celsius it will uh, convert it to uh, voltage uh, in the step of 10 millivolt so for example if zero degree celsius If you have zero degree Celsius here, it will convert it to analog value, which is zero volt. And if it is one degree Celsius, it will be converted to 10 millivolt. If it is two degree Celsius, it will be converted to uh, 20 millivolt and so on until the maximum value which is uh, 150 degree so this temperature is quite good actually it can stand up to 150 uh, degree celsius and this one is should be 1.5 volt and uh, the minimum is actually 55 minus 55 degrees celsius and of course we don't have uh, any representation here for microcontroller uh, but we can do actually but the programming is uh, a little bit more com complicated so in our case we just uh, use the positive value of the temperature 0 to 150 degrees celsius so that is how these uh, microphone uh, this this sensor work right so now let's look at this application uh, very easy one
So we have LM35 connected to P19, and the P19 is uh, is this one, which is analog input, so we can use. So make sure that if you have analog input, you only need to select, and uh, you must select either one here, P15 to P20, all right, cannot P14 or any other pin. So in this case, this is connected to P19, and the output here, we have uh, the LED uh, to indicate that this is cold, this is hot, and this is OK, it means that within the range connected to P21, P22, and P23. And uh, let's look at this flowchart, which is very easy. Uh, you can see that if the temperature is less than 20 degrees Celsius, so this indicates that the temperature is cool, so we turn on the cold LED. But if it is not less than 20, means that more than 20 degrees Celsius, and we need to check whether it is more than 35 degrees Celsius. So if more than 35, this indicates that this is uh, hot. Uh, yes, here, this is hot. But if not more than 35 means that it should be within 20 and 35 so we call that this is okay no nope. nothing uh, nothing wrong and we go back right so this is a very simple example very simple application and uh, now how to write the analog uh, how to write the code uh, to implement this with this connection, right? And uh, we need to remember that the analog in function, the value of the uh, uh, analog that is read is normalized eh, to the range of zero to one, means that the minimum value is zero and the maximum is one only. This means uh, this. This means that because our microcontroller, the LPC1768, uh, the control or the reference value is 3.3 volt. Okay, so uh, zero volt. The API, yeah, the analog in API, will give you zero value, uh, digital value. And 3.3 volt will give you uh, 1. All right. So you need to normalize. Eh? Normalize. So means that if you read the analog value using the analog in uh, function to a variable, for example, uh, voltage, your variable is voltage. And the value that you read is, uh, for example, 0 0.5. Yeah, so this is actually equal to 0 0.5 multiplied by 3.3 .3 volt. Yeah, which is a uh, 3.3 uh, multiplied by 0.5, which is actually 1.65 volt. Right. So remember, the analog in API, the value of the uh, analog value that we read is normalized right, from 0 to 1. Means that 0 represents 0, 1 represents 3.3. Anything between that, you need to multiply by 3.3 because 1 to get 3.3 uh, is to multiply by 3.3. Right, zero of course you multiply by 3.3 you get zero okay so here is the program uh, uh, 
uh, forget about this first. This is how we want to connect to the PC. We use the serial uh, function to display the value in the on the PC. Yeah. So forget about that first. This is analog in, and the name is POT1, and we connect to P20. In our case, in this is P19. Uh, change to P20 here. P20. So let's change to P20, uh, P19 here because uh, our specification is P19. And the OK is P. The OK is P23. The hot is P22. The cold is P21. All right. So this is OK. So we name this P23 as OK. P22 is hot, P21 is cold, and we have a uh, one uh, variable here, and the data type is double variable voltage, and this is the main loop. All right, and at first we turn off all the LED, so this because OK hot cold is uh, using uh, the digital out. So if we set zero, means that pin 23 is uh, zero volt or logic zero, hot logic zero, cool logic zero, and all of these pins are connected to the LED. So uh, it will be turned off. And this is the, the main loop, uh, the forever loop here, right? We have wall one, and here we can see that this will be always looping here and this is how we read from the uh, analog pin right this is so we read from to the uh, variable here the voltage variable so equal to this is how to read port one dot red yeah, the, use the function read and we multiply by 3.3 .3, just like i said here we multiply by 3.3 .3 to get the uh, the correct value of the analog value here multiply by 3.3 .3 and we can uh, now print the value of the uh, uh, the voltage value eh? in this case print uh, the voltage value on the screen this one is print print on the screen uh, use with this one eh? just forget about this first right so uh, to turn on and turn off the correct LED, so we can use if else. So if voltage more than 0 0.35, so more than 0 0.35, eh, 0 0.35 means that more than 35 degree Celsius eh, for LM35. So the hot LED will turn on. And the coal still off, the OK still off. But if less than 0 0.2, the coal will be on. But other than that, should be should be OK. Yeah? Else, OK equal to 1. And we have 0 0.5 delay right, to go back and read again and display again. So this will be a, a very simple application that we can uh, use uh, in order to read the analog. Uh, sensor and uh, output to the LED, right? So uh, the function, the serial function, we will learn uh, later. Uh, here, display on the on the computer computer screen uh, where we, you can uh, use this serial PC. Yeah, and you can use the printf function, just like uh, what you write in uh, the C code. So this one you can display on the computer screen, and of course on your computer you need a uh, uh, software that can read from the uh, serial input or from the USB in order to print this on the screen. I will uh, share with you the software that that I used yeah, in the in the example later. So here let's look at the example. So uh, we want to write the code this code. And we'll use the 
uh, the microcontroller to right the microcontroller the actual microcontroller and to see what happened when we when we do this okay All right can you see can you see the screen here uh, i have the microcontroller here so this is the microcontroller can you see the can you see the screen now now so this is uh, the embed microcontroller yeah i will i will try to program that that and uh, use this uh this board as the input and the output to the microcontroller because this board is uh, can uh has a software yeah that we can control using the software that can give the uh analog input to the microcontroller and also the uh, digital input to the microcontroller and we can read the output from the microcontroller as well all right so let's see okay hope you can see the screen clear clearly here so the program we will use the on online compiler all right we need to go to m here You write embed compiler on Google, and you need to this. And uh, before you can use this, you need to register as a user, and this is free. All right. So this compiler or this SDK, yeah, the software de uh, development uh, kit, is free, and it's run. Uh, on the server means that the compiler is run on the server not on uh, your computer so you can uh, you need to run it online yeah? so you need the, the internet in order to use this compiler so this is official from embed and this is free so when you register you can uh, have the uh, workspace like this so this is the program that I have uh, this is uh, my program so when you uh just register to the to this uh here you will have the empty empty window that you can uh, create the the new program here so this is how you create the new program go to new click new program and uh, the platform so here you need to select the the the, the platform so in our case is embed lbc1768 and uh, the template you can use the blinky template and create oops the name already exists so let's say we have the uh, adc example in our case so create the program example here So you will have the ADZ example here, and this is a main, and you will have the uh, the template. Uh, this is the Blink 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 uh, LED example. So we don't want to use this. Uh, we want to have the ADC program. I have one here. I just want just need to copy here and paste to my window here, and which is uh, still P20, but this is okay. You just change to P19 for the case, but I have it here already. I don't want to change. And I change the voltage to the temperature to display the temperature in the, uh, to dis display the, the temperature instead of voltage. Eh? So to get the temperature, of course, the voltage, 
you need to multiply by 100 and this is the exactly the same and i will uh, compile this and save to the embed board huh? when you connect your embed board to your my computer you can see that the embed board is uh, will become like one of your your drive huh? in this case in my case is e drive and the name is embed here this is the uh, the memory inside my microcontroller yeah? and the file here is actually the file that i have uh, download to the microcontroller so i can uh, just save the file here means that my file here is in my microcontroller already so uh, now when i press the reset button Okay, let's look at here. When I press the reset button here, all right, so it will uh, run the new program that, that I just download to, to the microcontroller. All right. And... Uh, This is the, my, my microcontroller. All right. So I connect here. Is the output to should be uh, should be connected to the LED, but I don't have uh, LED now, so I use the this port. Yeah, the uh, electronic board that I have because this one, this board has a software that can read yeah, the uh, any input and uh, show the output to the computer screen. And uh, I read the analog input from uh, the supply of the of the board as well. Eh? So this is uh, the power supply. Yeah, so I read to the to the microcontroller P20 in the, in this case, and I output the LED condition to the to the board as well, and uh, it will be displayed on the computer screen later on, right? And I also have a software that can uh, display. The value that I send from the microcontroller to the screen. All right. So in this case, is by using this function, and the software is called the. Uh, this uh, you can get from from the embed website also where you can uh, search on google the recommended software is terra term eh? terra term embed use embed and uh, click here and you can uh, download from uh, from the website right so the program here is uh, like this yeah there are term you click this this is a, a terminal program where you can select the input from the embed c report yeah? this is where we should see report when you install this software, you can get uh, this embed serial port. Or right, click OK, and it, and this is connected to the microcontroller. And uh, I have the program running already. Yeah, this is the program. So
right? So as you can see, this this is the the program, our program just now. Display the temperature that uh, we read. Well, this is actually a voltage. Yeah? I give the voltage uh, about zero point. Uh, 200 milli yeah, or 0 0.025 volt so it showed 25 point something uh, degree celsius here according to our program and uh, when we look at the software that i talk about So this is the software where I can give voltage to my to my microcontroller and this is the LED that I talk about. So these three are connected to the microcontroller pin. So this is hot, this is uh, I think okay, this is uh, this is cool. So uh, voltage now is about uh, 300 the temperature is about 20 25 yeah 25 degree so it should be okay right so when we change the temperature to uh, to more than uh, 35 for let's say for example make it big here so uh, the led is now hot right so so see the voltage is now up to 500 milli so it shows hot here and we have very small value here less than 200 for example one 100 milliamp so here we can see that the temperature is now five degree the temperature is now five degree celsius and we can see that this is coal all right and uh, the voltage now is here around uh, less than uh, 100 millivolt all right uh, uh, when i increase to about this so we have now okay because the temperature is now 25 degree so it is okay and when we increase to 500 so we can see that this is hot because the temperature now is uh, 45 46 degrees celsius and this is of course hot right so that demonstrate the uh, adc in uh, in our case Okay. So any question? Any question, class? Okay, no question from Nurul. Nurul.